This is the 1969 Boss 302 Shelby GT350. Serial number 9F02G482200. This was the only one made. This car was ordered April 21st of 1969, three days after the Boss 302s in 69 went into production. The order number was Henry Ford's race car number, how ironic, uh, which means it was one of three people that ordered the car which was informed to me from Ford Motor Company that it could have been Henry Ford the second which is highly unlikely Carol Shelby who did not could not order a car like this but it was probably Bunky Knudsen. It had to have been a top executive that ordered the car. Who had access. Etzel Ford II could have, but he was only 19 or 20 years old at the time. So highly unlikely that it was Etzel Ford II, even though he did endorse this car uh, in about 2008. And, but more than likely, it was Bunky Knudsen. Uh, the car has a lot of unique. This is 100% a one of one. There are so many cars that they claim uh, it was one of one because it had a stereo or an eight track player or white interior. This car is the only G code. Boss 302 Shelby out of 13,769 Shelby's produced, totally produced from 65 to 69 this is the only one that carries its own VIN. The Super Snake is one of the 30 some hundred that was produced in 67 did not single out that it was anything like a special VIN even the quarter horse was one of 500 there were two quarter horses but they did not carry their own VIN of course those weren't Shelby cars but they were Boss 429's but there were other prototype cars that they produced was for Shelby back in the day but it uh, again was this is the only one uh, that carries its own VIN. Uh, some of the other one of one uh, is it has single key entry, which means that was for law enforcement only, and it was one key fit everything from the trunk, glove box, door lock, and ignition. So it was law enforcement only, but it was called single key entry. You could not have ordered that. A civilian could not have ordered that. It was for law enforcement only. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I'm trying to think what uh, what the other one is. There's, there's so much other. Oh, it's the only 69 Shelby produced without power steering uh, so that's uh, a very unique feature that it uh, that there was no other 69 Shelby that was kind of standard they all had um, they all had power steering this car was ordered without power steering uh, it is believed that they were going to produce 200 of these that they were going to be called Trans Am Edition Boss 302 Shelby's for 1970. However, that did not happen. Uh, Shelby resigning from Ford 
Motor Company, uh, and he informed me through a 34-minute conversation one evening uh, and gave me the explanation how and why uh, he left Ford Motor Company. Uh, he told me that Bunky Knudsen was hired in by the, he called him the Deuce, Henry Ford II, to be the president of Ford Motor Company. And when he did, uh, the first, uh, they, they nicknamed Bunky the boss. So uh, the uh, boss program, of course, started up with the Boss 429. And Bunky uh, hated, and this is a quote from Carol Shelby, Bunky Newton hated my goddamn guts. That's exactly a quote from Carol Shelby. And he said, I was about to get, to, to get fired from Ford because Ford didn't need in-house competition. And a boss program was Bunky's baby. That's another quote from Carol Shelby. Uh, so he said, before I was fired, he goes, I resigned, and he goes, I owned my name. He said, I spent very little time at Ford Motor Company. He said, I was there by name only. And he goes, anything with my name, including programs, went with me. He said, I owned my name. So uh, when he left Ford Motor Company, this car was produced. Uh, it was ordered April 21st. They waited 15 days uh, for the VIN of 2244 to roll down and be produced because 44, this was also a quote for Ford Motor Company, 44 was an in-house code for a project car. So approximately nine to 10 days after this car was produced, Shelby resigned, so that ended the program and this car was kind of left unfinished. Uh, it was at Livonia, is what the history tells me. And when it went to Livonia, it sat there for who knows how long, so it's purely speculation. But an engineer, his title was a draft board excuse me, executive draft board design engineer on the 68 and 69 Shelby line. He brought the car home, ended up purchasing it from Ford, uh, changed the paperwork to get it out of Ford because it was not invoiced under 9F02G482244. So he changed the paperwork so he could get an invoice and he changed it to 582244. So that way it didn't show up on paperwork that it was a Shelby. And he kept the car, the family kept the car for 15 years. The engineer passed away in 76. His 19, only 19 year old son uh, acquired the car, of course, after his death. And uh, kept the car and then he passed away in 96 but he sold the car to a neighbor in uh, 1984 and from then on it went from he changed he's actually the one responsible for changing the paperwork the title back to 48 2244 so uh, cars very unique the other thing that's really unique the other one of one that is extremely rare is that Every 69 Shelby um, had the number uh, on the computer tape, and it was uh, X999, I believe it was, and every 67, 68, 69 Shelby carried that number. That was to signify... Uh, as that car was being built, that it was going to be a Shelby. But the order number, what it was called the item order number, was 9999. That was the magic number, and this car is the only 
only Shelby that ever had that order number. So that makes it even more unique. So there's about six one of one, uh, I guess you would call it titles that really signifies that the car is legitimately one of one and not just uh, something special. So the car is very, very, very original. It's got most all the original components with it um, that was traveled with the car. I am the ninth owner of this car and uh, it kind of got dipped as a bare metal shell in the late 90s and it just kind of traveled around and never um, never got completed until it got into my hands and uh, of course I finished the car. Uh, its first debut was at the Indianapolis Ford plant in 2007. There I called George Fulmer and Pernelli Jones to be my guest and uh, it was an awesome show. It was at the Ford plant. It was their 50th anniversary uh, and I debuted this car um, at, there at the Ford plant. So anyway, this is all the underneath of the car. As you can see, uh, the detail, uh, the authenticity, all the, date, all the sheet metal has date codes on it. Um, torque boxes, everything. This car had a few little rust spots, but nothing major. Um, all the stuff, all the, you know, all the detail is very much uh, authentic. Um, so it wasn't a rusted out piece of junk, as some people say. It was in very good shape. I mean, it's in uh, not been wrecked. Um, the quarters, the second owner replaced the quarter panels because somebody did tap him in one of the rear. But the first owner... Uh, cut the wheel wells out to put bigger tires on it back then which is stupid stuff that people did but you know that happened so anyway uh, this is uh, part one the end of part one of this car so this is an autographed endorsed glove box Carol Shelby endorsed for me uh, it probably about 2007 uh, Endorsed it one of one. This is the 1969 Boss 302 Shelby 9F02G 48-2244. Interior is almost completely original. Uh, front seat has a little damage to it, but it's original. Steering wheel is original. Uh, the dash is original. All the instruments are original. Console is original. The quarter windows are original. Uh, the second owner put these decals on this car. It's Acapulco Blue. This, what makes this car unique is that it shares the same suspension as the 69 Boss 302 as you see in the foreground which means the springs are lower than most Mustangs they are extremely stiff springs the Boss 302 suspension was unique to the car the spindles are larger so it's got larger bearings uh, no other car shared this suspension. Uh, like I said, it was extremely stiff. This is a sign that was made for the car. Of course, it's endorsed by Carroll Shelby and Edsel Ford as being the only Boss 302 Shelby ever produced. I will show you the endorsements. And of course it says it was 15 days behind schedule because it had, when the car was ordered, it was ordered April 21st, 1969, three days after the 69 Boss Rio 2s went into production, which was April 19th. 
Uh, the reason it was 15 days was they had to wait for the VIN of 2244 to roll and be produced because 44 was an in-house code for a project car. This car was ordered with an order number of 9999, which was Henry Ford's race car number. Ford Motor Company informed me that that was an executive order number that only possibly three people would have had access to that number. Henry Ford II, which probably did not order the car. Uh, Carol Shelby did not have access to that number. Uh, Ansel Ford II did, as did Bunky Knudsen. And of course, through the other story I mentioned when we was looking underneath the car, Bunky Knudsen and Carol Shelby clashed. And uh, because Bunky Knudsen hated Carol Shelby, so Carol Shelby resigned before getting fired. And when he left Ford Motor Company, anything with his name on it, he owned. So the car and the program was canceled along with everything else that Shelby had had his name on at Ford Motor Company. Like I said, the springs are very stiff on this car, Boss Row 2. This should have been the way the GT350, GT350s and 69 should have been produced because uh, 65, 6, and 7 Shelby's had a 289 Hypo, uh, which was a ferocious little engine, and the Boss Row 2 is basically the same. Uh, the camshaft, the rods are the same on a Boss Row 2 as a 289 Hypo. Uh, so they, it, it's just basically a little more stroke and a lot larger heads. So um, when this car was completed, it was sent to Livonia about April 9th, or May 9th, excuse me, May 9th, and Carol Shelby resigned shortly after that, I believe within a week or two, uh, from Ford Motor Company, so then that left this car kind of in limbo and was never completed. They were going to make a production run of 200 Trans Am Edition Boss Rio 2 Shelby's for 70. Uh, they did not because this car was so this car was the only one produced. And as you can see, the horns are on the right because uh, all Boss Rio 2s they had engineered to put an uh, oil cooler on the driver's side, and because of the cost, uh, they did not so. But all the cars were engineered to get that because the engines ran a little hotter than a 70 because the radiator inlet and outlet is above each other. On 70, they staggered it. So this engine ran just a little bit hotter than, uh, than a 70. So that's why they changed the radiator over to a cross flow versus, you know, above each other. Um, this car had a program um, that would, they were planning to race for FIA rules. There's a 17 page document and it shows the projected VIN of 9F02G48 and then 000 or XXX, whatever it says there. And it was called uh, GT350. 302G1111. That was the program. It was a 69 Cobra GT350 302. Uh, so it explains what, you know, that so they were planning actually to even race this car. They did not. Um, but again, and this car has even got the wheels or what came on it from when it was built. Uh, roll bar, the console, everything is Shelby. Uh, I will show you the VIN tag. The buck tag is original. The windshield VIN is the original. If I can do this without getting much glare on it. But you can see it's original 48 22 
And of course, that is the original, which it says, special performance vehicle, only Shelby's had that, Boss 302's did not. So it says special performance vehicle in that little block in the middle on the left. And it had an 84 DSO, which meant it was not intended to sell. This car was not invoiced. And the way the an engineer got it from Ford was he applied for a certificate, a, a C of O, to get a title, and he changed it to 582244 so he could get it out of Ford and he bought the car for like $1,750. Uh, I do have a copy of the receipt and the loan with the, 20, with the uh, 58 2244, including his registration and everything. Underneath the hood, I got Pernelli Jones and George Fulmer's signature, um, which is really cool because when I debuted this car in um, 2007 at the Ford plant Parnelli Jones and George Fulmer were my guest uh, as I kind of made a little error in the other video of underneath the car the Super Snake 1967 Super Snake carried 44 as the last two digits they were intending to build a hundred 427 GT 500s. They only built the one, um, but the VIN number on that is just a standard VIN out of the I think 4300. I forget how many 67 Shelbys they made, uh, but it is one of the 3000 or 4000 um, 67s. But the last three digits are 544, and again, that's an engineer. Uh, number uh, that Ford recognizes as a project car. This is a recent car that was produced last uh, die cast last year. Uh, it was to represent and it says pilot car on it uh, which is that's what this was. It was kind of not a prototype but it was a pilot car for a program but this model uh, is to signify the 50th anniversary for the Boss 302 engine. Uh, very nicely detailed. Um, there is so much glare, it's kind of hard to do, but uh, very nice, very nice detail. The car runs and drives very nice. Uh, you know, solid lifter, Boss Rio 2 engine. Uh, it's identical to the same engine that is in this car right here. So, this car actually is the last production day built. 69 Boss 302. They ran from April 19th to July 18th, and this car was built July 18th. And they only made 1,628 69 Boss 302s, only in four colors. Yellow, orange, which they called Calypso Coral, Acapulco Blue, and Wimbledon White. car sits very low to the ground. All 69's, if they do have the original springs, it's like the rear leaf springs are literally level when the car is sitting. There is no arch to them. They are very stiff. This car, you could jump up and down on it and it does not move. Um, they handle extremely well. Uh, I can't tell you enough how the handling is on a 69. 70's, they're actually just a little bit taller than a 69, so 69's usually set just a little bit lower. Carol Shelby was very nice to me, he gave me a 34 minute conversation on the phone one night. Uh, it was great, here's some books, there's several books and articles that this car's been in. Uh, that's just a handful of them in the back, uh, the rare finds and 
uh, Mustang Masterpiece, which is just outstanding book, uh, the Boss 302 book, Mustang Magazine, and the Shelby 50 Years, uh, it's all in that book. This was a plaque given to me. Ford Motor Company invited me to bring this car up to their 50th anniversary. It was for employees only. Uh, they brought out 15 prototypes and the centerpiece of the uh, of the display was the 60, 265 Shelby's and the in, in this car. What am I talking about? And they uh, gave me this plaque, uh, which gives a description that this was the only one uh, produced. And it was uh, great because they displayed the car um, as the centerpiece with the serial number 265 Shelby and serial number 365 Shelby, which was the first two serial number one will not come out so but they were representing the first program with Shelby and Ford and this car was the last programmed Shelby with Ford before he resigned but that's Etzel B Ford the seconds endorsement and of course Carol Shelby's So luckily the Ford engineer, he was an executive draft board design engineer on the 68 and 69 Shelby line uh, that he saved this car from Ford because I do believe that it was going to be destroyed along with other cars because it was not invoiced and then again it was going nowhere so it, once it was, the program was over uh, it there, there was pro, you know it was done so him taking this car out uh, kept it. Uh, the other thing that's unique was that these Boss 302 valve covers for uh, that's Shelby. We do believe that they were engineered strictly for the Boss 302 Shelby program because once the program was over, they made very few of these valve covers, and once uh, they were gone, they were gone. Uh, they did not keep producing these. They were strictly made. Uh, for the Boss 302 engine, which was intended to be because 65, 6, 7s, 8s, 9s, Shelby's all had Shelby valve covers, and this has the, of course, the modern CS logo on it. Uh, this car has a lot of one of one features. Of course, it's the only Boss 302 powered Shelby, it's the only one without power steering, the only Shelby produced without power steering. It has single key entry, which means one key fits everything, which again was strictly an engineer pick because civilians could not order a car that was for law enforcement only. So in other words, the trunk, doors, glove box, ignition was one key. And the one thing that's very unique is the order item number, which is 9999 which was Henry Ford's race car number. There is not one other Shelby out of the 13,000, I think it's 769 Shelbys that were produced. Uh, none of them had that order number and this is the only one out of the 13,000 cars that has its own VIN. Everything else is consecutive in with, you know, with all the other cars. So uh, this is a 100% one of one and more than one uh, <laughs> category uh, so it's a very rare very unique car this car even has the original buck tag which is down here and it says SS on it uh, I'm going to turn this sideways, maybe you can see it. Uh, Ford Motor Company uh, went through their archives trying to figure out what SS stood for because it's got racing mirrors on it, the uh, deluxe interior, uh, it's got a lot of other numbers on it that all kind of go and coincides with what it's normally uh, for the car, but SS, the only thing they could come up with, and they put it in writing, was Spatial Shelby. 
that's the only thing that they could come up with. Uh, so that makes it a little, little unique.